this is me doing coming up with the candid question for the cold open <laughs> <laughs> all natural julia i've been wondering this question for a long time dear god everybody stand back for the last five seconds as i just came up with this question uh-huh. if we were in in the wild west <laughs> If we we do were, have a lot of hypotheticals. It's all hypotheticals of if we were in the situation. <laughs> here's, here's the hypothetical this week. You were terrible at paragraph transitions in college, weren't you? I wasn't the best. If we were in the Wild West, do you think you'd identify more with the lawmen or the outlaws? Like, half the time there was crossover. It's called the yeah. Wild West for a reason. Yes. Okay, so then what do you think your trajectory would be? Because a lot of people, some started as outlaws, then became lawmen, some were lawmen who didn't like the system, became outlaws. What would your trajectory be? I think the best narrative of someone who's an outlaw and then randomly decides to retire, they're over it, you know, they're getting bunions from on their butt from writing too much, like, they're over it, they're done. And they just show up in this random town that they've never ransacked, and they're just like, city sent me out, I'm, I'm the new sheriff, sorry I'm late like got lost in the mail yeah. and just start a completely new life never told anyone and then everyone is straight and he just randomly knows all the the outlaws to come riding through town it's like hey joe it's been a minute you have to leave i like that story yeah that'd make a great movie i mean they'd probably fuck it up nowadays because i don't know if there have been any good westerns that have come out recently recently but... no although i saw the quick and the dead have you seen the quick and the dead i'm not that's a good one. Leonardo DiCaprio's in it, too. Uh, yeah, I haven't seen a lot of... That's vaguely, actually, the plot to The Quick and the Dead. Yeah. There's a bunch I, of outlaws trying to play law. It's. I think that's I think that's a lot of westerns. You know what? You asked me a very vague hypothetical. You're right. And that's kind of like today's story. Uh. In a sense, there are lawmen and outlaws. So it's basically the same basically just all that's right in (laughs) welcome to the dark archive i'm gavin and i'm julia and this is our this is the second to last episode of the season real short season uh the last episode with you maybe we'll do another episode in between the seasons who knows i'd love to do that but does it i mean next you know to tease next season for a quick second <laughs> it, on the it, second to last episode. The second to la- well, because you're not going to be here on the next episode. I know. But the reason why I say it, to tease the next season, if you like me and Julia talking, you'll like the next season. Because <laughs> there's going to be a lot more of that. Don't like me and Gavin talking. Why are you still here? If you don't like us talking, then I guess wait till season three, maybe. If you're only here for Chris, tough luck. True. If you're here for Chris, tough luck. We'll just jump right into it today. This is a topic that I, so I had a podcast previously where I talked about a lot of weird, strange stuff, and we did like 80 episodes. And surprisingly, one of the things that I don't think we covered in any of the 80 episodes was anything in the Wild West. Really? You never hit on that? I don't think so, which is weird. But so that's why with this season, I was like, gotta do wild west that seems fun that seems like a fun after i said hey gavin let's do a wild west episode well and then i was like hey julia what (laughs) should we do and you were like oh this gunfight that's a pretty cool story and then i look it up it is a quite famous story (laughs) which i mean (laughs) a lot of these episodes it's like you're like let's do it on this and i'm like oh wow i've never heard of it and i look it up and it's like this is one of the most well-known events in history (laughs) and i'm like wow i guess (laughs) I didn't pay attention in middle school. What was your degree in again? Television, which Mm -hmm. is almost the exact opposite of history. (laughs) (laughs) If you really think about it. No one thinks about television that hard. What? Nothing. I was dissing you. Editing Gavin can respond. (laughs) (laughs) Some people in television probably have to know history. So they can blatantly disregard it. (laughs) Yeah. So that they know that they would, that they've changed it and that it's I've seen the tutors. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, but then there's also people in like the crown that are, probably have to be a little bit more accurate. They hire people for that. Exactly. <laughs> the TV majors, they're like, we can't be the ones to do this. Wait, let's outsource this shit. Exactly. So gunfight at the OK Corral is one of Finally. the most famous yeah, and well-known the title events in there. 
of the American Wild West. So this took place a long time ago, well before the Super iPhone. Super long. Uh, October 26, oh 1881, in Tombstone, Arizona. Uh, it is often there's portrayed a as a classic Called shootout Tintone. between lawmen and outlaws. Yeah, there's a bunch of movies. We're going we're gonna to talk about that. There's a lot of movies, and I think there's a TV show, or at least it's been depicted in a lot of things. So, and I have heard of uh, some of the, like, yeah, you're right. There was a movie. There's a movie with Kurt Russell. There's a movie with Kirk Douglas way, way back. Uh, there was yeah, an episode. I know about the Kurt Douglas one. Yeah, Tombstone. Kurt Russell. I don't know. Kurt. I do know Kurt Douglas. Kurt Russell. <laughs> Kurt Douglas, who was um, the other Douglas's father, the current Michael Douglas's father. He did it in 57. Oh, he's old. Yeah. Michael uh, Douglas. And married to Catherine Zeta Jones. I know. That's kind of a. And pulled. Yeah. Uh, apparently, there was also a Star Trek episode that like vaguely had the story. Oh, that line. must have been next gen. <laughs> I'm sure. So, yeah, a lot of things. Winona Earp for oh yeah my geeks out there that's my favorite one yeah, yeah, yeah. and Wyatt Earp in the nineties with Kevin Costner which I think was I didn't know about that one yeah so a lot of things there's also something with Henry Fonda wow there's just some I'm just looking at the list right here of all the things there's a lot of this has been uh in pop culture a lot so this pre iPhone era pre iPhone era. Uh, it's often portrayed, like I just said, as a classic shootout between lawmen and outlaws. The fighting was over in less than a minute. I think mm. that there were like 30 shots in 30 seconds. When the gun smoke cleared, three men lay dead. However, the truth is more complicated than the myth. And the <gasps> events leading up to the gunfight were influenced by many different factors. As most things <gasps> are, influenced by many factors. It's like the worst MLA format. Intro? Today we're going to learn how to write an intro. <laughs> And it's like just trying to hit the word count. So, yeah, sorry for the che- <laughs> sorry for the cheesy intro. So then here's what we'll do. I'm gonna set the scene. You know I love you. You know I love to set the scene. Oh yeah, it's a verbivore over there. We're gonna to set the scene. Let's go back to Tombstone, Arizona. I wish I had. I wish I was sitting in front of a green screen so it could just go like. <laughs> and now we're here in Tombstone, Arizona. Just pretend it's Back to the Future. In the year 1881. Tombstone was a small town in the Arizona Territory that had experienced a boom in population and wealth following the discovery of silver in 1877. So this is just a few years after that. The sudden influx of people and money led to an increase in crime and violence, as many of the new residents were drifters, gamblers, and outlaws looking to make a quick buck. Which, I mean, I assume that that was a lot of the world when everyone was discovering new places that had new resources to offer. Because I'm a joker, I'm a smoker, I'm a midnight dollar. Yeah. Should have used the should use those. <laughs> there were smokers. <laughs> All those. Among those were some pretty infamous characters, such as Wyatt oh. Earp and his brothers, uh, who had recently arrived into town. Now, Julia, <laughs> you might be saying to yourself, who are the Earp brothers? Who are the Earp brothers? I've never heard of them. Thank you so much for asking. They're actually the mm. main characters in our story. <gasps> oh my if god. You... What a crazy random happenstance to have If you keep upon gasping, I will have a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> it's good for you. It keeps it keeps the viewers uh attentive, <laughs> paying attention, keeping them on their toes. Wakes them up. Wyatt Earp, similar to uh, what we, you know, we're talking in the very beginning about lawmen and uh, outlaws. Wyatt Earp was a former lawman who had worked as a constable, deputy sheriff, and town marshal. All jobs that are so wild west. They don't, (laughs) you don't hear about constables nowadays. What the fuck is a constable? (laughs) What is a constable? (laughs) Time to Google. I associate it very strongly with Brits. Uh, A constable is a person holding a particular office most commonly in criminal law enforcement oh so or the governor of a royal castle oh that is the secondary definition so maybe they maybe maybe constables are still around (laughs) maybe i don't think they're in this country but try not to enter towns that are smaller than my graduating class all of the news articles it's like bbc (laughs) (laughs) just like England. Well, we don't really have any castles in these good old United States. That's our downfall. We should. Right. That's the biggest problem plaguing the nation. <laughs> it really is. 
We sh- we still have sheriffs, probably. Yes. And town marshals, probably. We still have sheriffs. <laughs> you have never been west of the Mississippi, have you? No, I have not. Um. Well, I've been. To- all way far west to California and Arizona. Wait, so I've been to no, I've been to Arizona. So that's where our story takes place. Okay. So I stand corrected. Uh, but so he had been in Kansas and Missouri, uh, states in the middle of somewhere. I don't want to say butt fuck nowhere because that feels mean. What if we have listeners Ooh. in Kansas? Kansas is actually not butt fuck nowhere. It's adjacent to it. <laughs> that should be their slogan. Kansas. Adjacent to butt fuck nowhere. He had a reputation as a tough and fearless lawman who was not afraid to use violence when necessary. Sounds like a lot of lawmen today. Am I right? Ooh, some police commentary. Ooh. Oh, if you think there's police commentary now, just wait. There's going to be some parallels. If you know, if you listen to the Dark Archive, you know, we love to make parallels. Mm-hmm. It's all a circle. Just can't help ourselves. Although this one doesn't really relate back to satanic panic. I feel like we always relate it back to like satanic panic and like witch trials. Hang in there. I'll figure it out. I've got find... my red string in a drawer somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Find a way to link this back to satanic panic. There's a cork board back here behind my head. <laughs> in 1879. So this is just the two years before uh, the gunfight. Uh, Wyatt Earp moved to two. <laughs> it really took me a second. <laughs> really took me a second (laughs) he moved to tombstone arizona with his brothers virgil and morgan seeking a fresh start and hoping to capitalize on the town's growing economy they just don't name boys like they used to they don't virgil virgil morgan and Wyatt. that's awesome that's pretty sick and i love that they're like him and his brothers the brothers (laughs) like that's so cute they're moving together to get a fresh start the brothers I can't imagine you and Simon moving anywhere together. No. (laughs) To get a fresh start on a town's growing (laughs) economy? Not particularly. (laughs) No, no. You like to take advantage of healthy economies. (laughs) (laughs) I do. So, (laughs) Julia, you might be thinking to yourself, on one side, we've got Wyatt Earp. I might be thinking that. The main character of our story. As it was announced to me. (laughs) As it was announced. What goes on the other side of a main character? <laughs> no, I'm asking you. Oh, um, I mean, it depends on what kind of story we're talking about here. Are we looking for a villain or an antagonist or the other main character? Well, you know, that's an interesting point. <laughs> I'm glad that you bring that up that we'll talk about at the end. I shouldn't be so quick. Well, so wider main character, but I should not be so quick to say hero and villain because that actually is going to be something we're going to talk about at the end ho 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 the is moral quandary is the uh hero and villain so first so we have to introduce our other main character i like that the clanton gang not the clinton gang the clanton gang, the clanton gang. <laughs> was a group of outlaws and cattle rustlers who operated in and around tombstone another fabulous wild west title cattle rustler cattle rustlers yeah they're out there R- rustling your cows <laughs> you don't get a lot of cattle rustlers these days not in front of the children <laughs> oh geez but they were outlaws <laughs> so it made sense they were outlaws and cattle rustlers that really okay. went hit ha- really went hand in hand uh the gang was led by ike clanton once again ike you don't see ikes anymore <laughs> you just don't not outside of green cardboard boxes this whole this episode is ike. just us going oh man they don't name outlaws like they used good to. Good name. <laughs> good name. That's a good name right good there. Good name. <laughs> and there's still more good names. We're not done with good names. Uh, so Ike, which, Ike. you know, he might have been so menacing back then. Uh-huh. But if if some guy comes up to me and goes, I'm Ike, <laughs> that is not a menacing man. <laughs> I don't know. It depends on how you, pre- if he's like in a double breasted suit and there's well, a he's like, I'm Ike. scar coming down your, coming down his eye, I might be looking for, for the Don behind him. Well, that is judging a book by its cover. Blatantly. Yes. Blatantly. However, Ike, he did have a long history of criminal activity <laughs> and was known to be an incredibly violent and dangerous man. Woo. Uh, so Ike Clanton, the leader of the Clantons, the Clantons were opposed to the Earps, who they saw as interlopers trying to muscle in on their territory. I like the idea of us just being opposed to them. I oppose! 
Yeah. I object. Also, like, low-key fair. Like, <laughs> the Clintons were, they were chilling. They had their territory. Granted, this they were probably being, territory. yeah, pretty violent about it. But, you know, all of a sudden, the Earp boys, they uh, they start moving in. I'm boys. pretty fair for them to say, hey, look at these interlopers trying to muscle in on our territory. Did you come up with the word interloper on your own? I they used interlopers in uh, one of the last episodes of Succession. Great, show. Oh. <laughs> great word. So look, they're finally they're bringing that word back, rightfully. They so. didn't go anywhere. Yeah, but you know sometimes words go away in the deep like, dark pages outlaw? of the dictionary. Outlaw. Hmm. Who's a modern day outlaw? Itty boo. Who modern day outlaw? We catch them usually. Or we don't admit to it. True. So the tension between the Earps and the Clantons came to a head in October 1881, when Wyatt Earp was appointed as Deputy U.S. Marshal by his brother, Virgil, who was the town marshal. So you know what has... Nepotism. Yeah, you know what has been around? Nebo babies. Bring it around. (laughs) Your brother's the... If if my brother was the town marshal and I was like, yo, make it... You should totally make me the deputy U.S. marshal, dude. Simon would look at you and go, no. He'd probably say no. Uh, but Virgil didn't. Good for Virgil. Erp. <laughs> Keeping it in the family. Wyatt Erp uh, was tasked with enforcing a new law that required all weapons to be surrendered at the city limits in an effort to curb growing violence in the town. Oh, I can't see that going wrong at all. Yeah, I'm sure that's going to go so well. You're telling me in the Wild West, in Arizona, truly, like, the desert, mm-hmm. like, what you think of when you think mm-hmm. of the Wild West, mm-hmm. these new guys move in, and they're like, hey, everybody, if everybody could just put all their guns in this basket. Could everybody line up and remember the screen to take your guns? Thank you. You know, you know in, like, oh, thank you. probably elementary school, well, and maybe also, like, definitely high school, eh, probably through public education, we'll say. <laughs> you ever see those like things that they hung on the door and you'd put like your phone in it or something like that? Yeah, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. Phone That's what's... <laughs> and then they like, you know, they'll put your name on it or like a number and it's like, all right, you're that number. That's what they uh-huh. did basically for all these guys and their guns. They're like, okay, everybody <laughs> put it on the door. If you come in into town, you have to put it in the basket uh, and you can I'll give it back to you at the end of the day. Exactly. You can collect it on your way out, but if you're inside the city <laughs> limits, your gun must go in the basket. And the only people allowed to have guns are me. Yeah. And Verge. <laughs> and Verge. And what was the other brother? Oh, Morgan. Morgan. Sh- they must have let Morgan have a gun. Morgan was like a poet or something. <laughs> <laughs> Morgan was like an actor, and he was just like, oh, guys, I just want to put on plays in the town square. <laughs> just their accountant. Yeah. <laughs> Completely different line of work. So this was then not too long after they put that rule into effect. On the morning of October 26th, 1881. The, the Earp date bro- that we keep fucking mentioning. Yes. So remember <laughs> that. Remember that date. An important date. The Earp brothers and their friend, Doc Holliday. The name that if you've ever heard of this is the one you've heard of. They don't name them like they used to. Although- they really don't. Doc Holliday? Excellent. Sorry to be the bear of bad news. That is not his real name. <laughs> obviously <laughs> if you could doc no one's like hey yeah. doc you'd like no one no one gives birth and is like i'm gonna call this kid doc you would be so shocked at the weird shit people named their kids even just a hundred years ago by weird by our standards i would boys like, were wearing pink girls were wearing blue it was anarchy dogs and cats were sleeping together it's crazy <laughs> uh his name was actually john henry holiday so I can understand why he I was like, that, actually. he was like, all these guys have sick names. My name's John Henry. That's so lame. You guys, call me Doc. Doc Holiday also sounds like the male version of a Bond girl. It like does. Christmas Jones. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I would say it sounds like a made up name, but that's because it is that's it, it is a made up name. <laughs> Correct. So, of course but it it's only half made up. True. It comes by the holiday, honestly. Yeah. It's a funny, funny name. So the Earp brothers and Doc Holliday were walking down Fremont Street in Tombstone when they encountered Ike Clanton and several members of his gang, who had been drinking heavily and were seen with their guns in plain sight around town. Now listen, I'm not a lawyer. A shock, really. Really not. <laughs> really not. <laughs> Do not take legal advice from me. But if 
dog or medical life. advice, <laughs> emotional or advice. Really, any advice. <laughs> if the town marshal puts a new law into effect, I would say mm, maybe don't like d- disobey it in it? plain sight. Yeah. If they have their guns, that's one thing. But like to be like, RA again, if you're gonna bring alcohol into the dorms, <laughs> I don't want to know about it. Exactly. Don't be waving your guns around in plain daylight when the Earp boys and Doc are walking around. <laughs> so, Holiday, Doc, Holiday, comma Doc, uh, who was a known deadly gunslinger, confronted the Clantons. Badass Doc. Uh, no, there's and, nothing like your friend being like, "Hey," <laughs> and you're like, "That's that's that's my job. That's that's no wait." The Earp brothers being like, "Gosh, like." Those guys have their guns out, and Doc's like, I'm gonna do something about it. They're, he goes, Yo, watch this. <laughs> Doc Holiday is like the drunk friend that you have to keep a leash on because she tries to run when she's yeah. drunk. Yeah. They're like, No, oh. no, they're like, wait, do they oh, they got they have the gun, they have their guns out. Doc's like, Yo, I... give me my gun. Let me go I'm over there and talk to them. back. So he confronted the Clintons and demanded that they surrender their weapons. Doc. Doc, like, this just went into effect. These guys, this is not going to go well. Clanton accused them of violating his rights and trying to take away his guns. No. It all comes back around. How relevant. That that indicates that it ever went anywhere to begin with. <laughs> That's fair. The Clantons were like, Doc, you liberal snowflake, no. <laughs> yeah. So uh as you can imagine, they didn't immediately agree and resolve the situation. <gasps> uh the argument what? quite quickly escalated and shots were fired. The bang, okay, bang, Carl, bang, bang. gunfight bang, didn't bang, bang, result bang, bang. in a gunfight? I know. Quite crazy. The gunfight lasted only 30 seconds, but when it was over, three members of the Clanton gang, Tom McLowry and his brother Frank and Billy Clanton, were dead. <gasps> and Virgil and Morgan Earp were wounded. Wyatt Earp, Doc Holliday, and a few other lawmen were unharmed. Good shooting, Tex. Yeah. So... Pop off Doc. And I mean, I just assume the other guys also took out their guns. There was like 30 shots in 30 seconds. I I mm. can't. Im- and they, they, they're they probably revolvers with six bullets or whatever. Like, it's a lot of guys. Everybody's shooting. Yeah. Bang, 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 bang. <laughs> I've never held a gun in my life, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> I have. I've shot a revolver. It's kind of cool. I would hope it was in a safe environment and not against anybody I'm not in my hick, <laughs> hick uncle's backyard no i would hope that it was not against anybody in the clanton gang although actually three of them died so it didn't really go well for the clantons some, they were drunk as you mentioned yes one thing i will say before we go now into the aftermath of the gunfight it's called the gunfight at the okay corral correct yes uh, well, yes, they so the title. where do you think that the gunfight took place? Okay, Corral. Actually, it R- probably took place in Town Square. Wrong. Why would you think it took place at the the Okay Corral? Did no. it take place in Town Square? Did not take place there. Despite the name, the gunfight did, did not place take place square? within or next to the Okay Corral, which affronted Allen Street and had a rear entrance lined with horse stalls on Friedman Street. The shootout actually took place in a narrow lot on the side of C.S. Fly's photography studio on Fremont Street. (laughs) Well, that just doesn't have the same ring to it. (laughs) Six doors west of the OK Corral's rear entrance. They couldn't call it gunflight at the photography studio. That really would not age well. No, that really just doesn't roll off the tongue. Gunfight at C.S. Fly's Photography Studio on Fremont Street? Put it on a t-shirt. Buy it. It's not, it's not quite the same. Although, I'm sure when it... I'm sure they were like, shoot now, think about how we market this later. They didn't have the PR team with them. <laughs> right. Hey, Morgan. 
They were like, guys, can we scoot down six doors? This is going to have a get, much better get name. Get the other brother out here to spin this. Yeah, it happens. And then they're like, oh, we should have shot them down there. Six uh, doors down. Damn. But they're like, this is CS. CS Flies Photography Studio. They were hanging That's out in front of CS lame. Flies Photography Studio. You can't put that on a t-shirt. They're like, what's a t-shirt? They're like, no, it's good. just don't even get into it. You don't hey, get you it. know when uh, Levi's were patented, the first denim jeans? Good question. I don't. 1873. These guys were probably wearing jeans. And that oh. wasn't, that was well after denim was invented. Jeans, like the Levi patent, the patent specifically was for like the, you know, the metal rivets and the corners of pockets on your jeans. Yeah. That's what the patent's for, not the denim bit. Denim is a very oh, old for patent. the Levi patent or for the uh, jeans patent? Levi's were the first to patent oh. jeans as we know them today. But the patent was for like the rivet pattern, the, 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 the pants that had the rivets at the pocket mm. corners. And denim, the fabric itself is a, uh, way older uh yeah nowadays we all just wear uh, denim with uh some stretch in it so. i don't i do my pants freaking ripped the other day <laughs> so now i gotta get new jeans fast fashion i have sewn up rips in your pants before i have mended I, rips in your I pants i'm glad to you so you can sew my jeans <laughs> it's so sad it's my favorite pair of jeans that's beside the point we're talking about the gunfight at the six doors down from the okay corral <laughs> gosh you know they probably didn't have fast fashion back then it was probably really slow fashion much they didn't have much kids slower. they didn't have kids working and sewing stuff up and no breaker boys or no matchstick girls if only. actually exactly when they had breaker boys <laughs> and matchstick girls fair before you know they had the regulations they do today where it's you know still terrible working conditions uh -huh. i can only assume Maybe I was about to say maybe we'll do an episode on fast fashion, but we kind of did with toxic workplaces. But maybe we'll do one oh my more. God, fast, fast fashion. fashion is so depressing. Yeah, that could be a good thing to talk about. So, the gunfight at the OK Corral was a turning point in the history of the American West, with the aftermath of the gunfight arguably almost being as dramatic as the event itself. So, like we said, you know, it mostly impacted the clans. They had three of their guys shot. To clarify, clans with a C. Yeah, Clanton. As, oh, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. That's something we probably should have clarified. It's Clanton. That's why I said Clanton, not Clinton. Because it's just one letter off. But oh, yeah, there not, you go. There's that's another little red saying. string going up on the board. <laughs> that's fair. They had to change one letter. Um, But uh, another, like, people, they don't know exactly what happened. It's all like some people claim, well, we don't know who shot first. People like they assume both ways, so it's all. It was Han. It's very yeah. Han did, shot first. Did Han Holiday shot first, or did Greedo Clanton shot first? <laughs> we don't know. We don't know who shot first. Um, the surviving members of the Clanton gang, obviously, were not too pleased. They threatened to seek revenge, and oh, tensions man. in the town remained high, because you know I'm sure a gunfight was really going to settle the tensions in the town. It sounds like a news bulletin. The Clantons say that they're seeking revenge. Tensions in the town remain high. Going now to our on-the-ground expert, Whitney, what are you seeing down there? And they're like, later today, we have an exclusive interview with Sean Henry Holiday. Wait, Doc Holiday? Okay. I'm sorry, it looks like this has been scratched out with pencil and written in. Doc Holiday? Okay. <laughs> he claims everybody's been calling that for years. I beg to differ. <laughs> Wyatt Earp and his brothers were charged with murder. This then became a big deal because, you know, they were like the police of the town. <laughs> <laughs> they were charged with murder, but also ultimately, ultimately acquitted in a trial that became a national sensation. As much of a national uh... sensation as it could before, you know, Twitter and stuff. Television. Right, because Twitter is the, <laughs> the litmus test for... Of national sensations. Oh, God. The Earps were initially hailed as heroes for their bravery and standing up to the Clanton gang. But as time went on, their reputation began to suffer. The Earps were accused of using excessive force and of killing the Clantons in cold blood. 
despite the fact that everyone in the fight had guns. Oh, that yeah, that, that, yeah. <laughs> that was yeah. Considering the whole reason for the fight was that everybody had guns, and then all of a sudden everybody started shooting. I could argue there was probably a little bit of self defense, probably a hair of self defense. I think when someone pulls a gun on you in the Wild West, you pull a gun back. Yeah, like I said, I don't know a lot about the Wild West, but I'm pretty sure that's how it works. I'm pretty sure that's the whole <laughs> that's thing. <laughs> pretty sure that's all they did in the Wild West was have that shootouts. is the whole story and saloon girls, saloon girls and shootouts. Yeah, that's the pretty whole much it. Hit and caboodle. I think so. I would not have survived in the Wild West. Let me tell you that. Well, I'm... it was before smartphones, as True. we established early. Before smartphones, after the time of jesters. I really would not have fit into the picture. There's nowhere for me to fit in. <laughs> Your niche was non-existent. No. They were also criticized for their ties to the Republican faction in Tombstone and for their role in the town's political struggles. This, was, I'm sure, was before... Was like, are, I know Republicans and Democrats like, changed the beliefs to like modern times. Do you know? What... They flip-flopped. <laughs> Um, yeah. at the my last reference point for this is Lincoln. Lincoln was a Republican, but at the time, um, Republicans had a platform that we would consider much more comparable to that of Democrats these days. I don't remember when the flip started. Yeah. So, you know, you can't really judge it based on today's standards, but understandable that people, you know, are like, oh, I mean, they're always bringing politics into everything. You always got to bring politics into it. Yeah, in like the 1850s, the Republican Party was anti-slavery, which we talked about. That's good. That's great. Right, right, right. They were what we know, what we would consider Democrats. Yeah. It must be a more Democrat view if the Earps were also the people to be like, let's like decrease gun violence and like take away guns and stuff, which is then yeah. very much a more Democratic thing today. Um. So, basically, then in layman's terms, they were criticized because they had a very liberal mindset and didn't want people to die and for their role in politics. Again, it's all full circle. Or like you say, mm -hmm. a line because it's all the same. <laughs> <laughs> Wyatt Earp, in particular, became a culture controversial figure with some people seeing him as a hero and other people seeing him as a villain. So... We talked about earlier, you know, deciding who is the heroes and who's the villains. I I, I think it'd be, the, I think there's no clear answer because, you know, there'll be people today who are like, oh, he's trying to lock up guns. He's mm -hmm. a villain. We know those kinds of people. Uh, mm -hmm. And then there's the other side of people who are saying, oh, that's great. He's trying to, you know, decrease violence and like trying to make a safer place in this gunslinging era. I mean, it's the classic conundrum of liberty over safety that's happened yeah. for as long as there's been government. Like I've said, you know, the legacy of the gunfight is a very complicated one. It's been romanticized countless books and movies, which we talked about at the beginning, uh, but mm -hmm. also criticized for perpetuating myths of the Wild West and glorifying violence, which I think is probably the biggest. Like, I, I mean, I just said that we just joked about that the Wild West was <laughs> all just like gunfights and saloon girls. All sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Yeah. Some people see it as a heroic moment for law enforcement. I don't love that. I don't love the way... I don't love law enforcement. Uh, while others view it as a tragic example of a culture that glorified guns and revenge. I think you had a bunch of men with guns. Half of them were drunk. The other half were large and in charge. And you put them in a town square together. Yeah. I think you put a bunch of men in a town in an alleyway together with guns, alcohol, and an ego. Yeah. And there was violence. I mean... Stories all this time. Yeah. As we've said multiple times, this was not a time period where, you know, people sat down and solved conflict, like... Right. Uh, nicely. They were like, you stand over there, I'm going to stand over there, and we're going to see who can shoot each other first. <laughs> Quick! So... Where did they go? I, I guess the only difference between then and today is that there's not as many shootoffs, at least where both parties are aware that there's going to be a shootoff. <laughs> it's not Whoa. a shootoff, that's an assassination attempt. Woke joke. Woo, woo, woo. Controversial <laughs> joke. Woke take. 
So that's the gunfight at the OK Corral. I know that there's a lot of other. I'm I'm sure there were no shortage of gunfights uh in the Wild West, but this I could let us know if you want us to do an episode on like Billy the Kid or yeah Jesse James. I would guess that there are a lot more interesting stories with more specific if we did more like biographical like looking at specific people although on the other hand the only reason why i might say that this is boring is just because it's so quick (laughs) it's not just that it's so quick it's that like this is the story that everybody thinks of of like a gunfight but also this is one of the ones that is the reason why there's like those types of stories is because it turns out in reality it was kind of lame it's just all the romantic romanticizing depreciation yeah romanticization romanticization yeah so so that's really kind of it i mean it's still an interesting story yeah quickie but the goodie it's just a little quickie this is the shortest episode probably the shortest episode of the season and it totally didn't have anything to do with the fact that i have to leave right now no not at all (laughs) so we'll uh julia we'll see it we'll see you next season although i'm sure i'll do more episodes in between the seasons because i you know i love to do that i know you um but uh i'm looking for i hope people enjoyed this season and check out the other episodes uh it's been fun looking forward always let us know what you want to hear next yeah let us know comment follow us everywhere because uh i mean we do have a lot of good ideas lined up but we are always open to uh new ones so thanks for listening for the dark archive i'm gavin and I'm Julia. Oh my god, Total wait, Pippen. real quick before you Allie go, we have to say our lesson. What did we learn? Um, guns are throw... bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, that... Guns beget violence and a culture that depends on violence as a method of problem solving will never be open to new ideas because guns are a, a weapon of power. Guns kill people as well as people killing people. <laughs> Yeah, Both. people Everybody. pull the trigger and then the gun kills people them. People pull the trigger and then the guns kill the people. And fade to black. This podcast is produced and engineered by Gavin Berger with High Tops Media. The Dark Archive is co-hosted by Gavin Berger, Julia Siegel, Chris Massarelli, and Shaila Jayasingha. Our theme music is composed by Jeffrey Taylor. You can rate and review The Dark Archive on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, and check out more episodes of The Dark Archive available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. And be sure to follow us on Instagram, at The Dark Archive Podcast, and on TikTok, at The Dark Archive. And see more of our content with High Tops Media on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, at High Tops Media.